Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Near the senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls. And welcome to this. Another brand new day. Yes, indeed. A brand new day filled with, well, things that make up a day. I mean, energy and matter, solids and liquids, gases, uh, molecules, atoms. Welcome to physical existence. <laughs> ah, past that though just today. So I'm going to start off with the Shelton, Washington weather plague rat and spider report. Weather. It was not bad yesterday. I carried my umbrella with me when I went walkies. And it was around 4 o'clock when I went walkies. But I carried my umbrella with me. But it didn't rain while I was out, so that was good. And it was a two-hour walkies. Hopefully, I'll remember to talk about the whole walkies and cardio thing in a bit. But the weather's been nice, and it's not raining now. It's getting lighter outside. I don't know what the weather's like yet. I'm sure it's gray. Play Grat Report. Well, of course, I mean, I walked to Walmart. I didn't go in, just walked up there and then walked back on the way. I don't expect people to wear masks in public, and I rarely see people wearing masks in public. Good or bad, I don't know. I rarely wear a mask in public because I'm always smoking pre-rolls. Not always, but on my walk to Walmart, three-mile walk, I'll smoke anywhere from two to four. When I'm done, I put my mask on. But if I'm going to be doing something else like that, I keep it off. I'm in public. If I go into a store, any kind of building where there's other people or circulated air, there's a mask on. You got that right. Now, for the spider report. Oh, Hokey Smokes, Amelia. She has been knocking and moving that box out of the side. And yesterday she knocked, when, when I say knocked the box out of the side, in the window I had some plastic boxes and such. One of the spiders that is in the actual window frame itself had a bunch of anchor points that went down to those boxes. Amelia knocked them all out, freaked the spider out, destroyed its web, still sleeps underneath where the spider is in the window like she knows it's there and is just pissing it off. The other spider to the side in the corner, that one's still been okay. I put the box in the window because she was pushing herself in such a way that it was irritating the spider web. And so I put the plastic box back up. She knocked it down in such a way that when I was getting it out, picking it up off the floor with my walker, my walker, I have a grabber and was grabbing it, but it disturbed her web in such a way that she just vacated entirely and was hiding. And I was mad at Amelia for doing this because it's like, I don't want you destroying all these spider webs. It's like, you're doing this on purpose. So I got the box back up there. I'm making sure it's tucked in. She's over there near it, but whenever she's touching it, I push her away from it. So the spider is still okay. The other spider up in the window is fine. There's a million and one tiny little moths that thank goodness there's little spiders here everywhere. I got a moth on the little camera that's there. I don't know what they're eating, but the window's open, so undoubtedly they fly in from the light. But also, I keep finding little caterpillars as they dangle from a, a little bit of thread so that they can make a chrysalis and turn into a moth. So, <sighs> thumbs up for that. <laughs> uh, past that, though, did not really do much yesterday. And that happens whenever I've got therapy because as I talked about with my therapist, and my therapist made sure to stress to me, we, our minds are like a gigantic lake. And we're floating up here on the top of it. Just on the top. This is our consciousness, that what's on the surface. It is deep and huge. And everything is just dumped inside of there. All of our memories, good and bad, mixed inside of this great big lake lake and there's fishing line attached to it so you want to drag up a memory you'd start pulling up that fishing line but the line is tangled and long and it keeps because of all these deep undercurrents that keep getting attached to other things so you go to drag up one memory and you're gonna drag up something you didn't realize that you you were gonna drag up and it's oh my god you can't deal with it everything's got to go back down 
There's currents that run underneath all that. We don't know how we think. We don't know how we process. There's a lot of stuff happening inside of that lake. So whenever I have therapy day, everything, because everything that's getting pulled up is dragging up other things. And yeah, there's times when you think you're gonna think about, yeah, I remember this thing about, say, your mother. And up comes the wreckage of the Titanic with it. It's gotta go back down. So there's been a lot of stuff running underneath the surface, all those currents, and that happens on my therapy day. Everything is just a jumble on those days. So I didn't get a ton done. I mean, I did recording for a video and I edited and I uploaded and everything was good. And that's, that is a good thing. But past that, I just did that, watched videos, went walkies, came back, watched more videos, and then went to bed because, oh my God, I was just so tired. I get so sleepy. Starting about eight o'clock onward now, I'm just, come nine o'clock, I am literally falling asleep. So about nine, anywhere from sometimes as early as 8.30 till 10 o'clock, I finally drag my carcass off to bed because I just can't stay up anymore. Sometimes it's from nerve inflammation because when you move, when you do things, you know, your tissues swell because blood flow, because use, that's what happens. That can cause issues with your nerves. The inflammation of all that causes pressure on my nerves. And when I get back from walkies quite frequently, well, I say quite frequently, about 25% of the time, I can't sit here long. I have to go to bed. So if I'm even a little bit tired, I'm gone. Because it's like restless leg, but no mental component. It's like physical anxiety, but no mental component. But when I'm sitting here and my body is incredibly uncomfortable with all those feelings that I get from restless leg and anxiety, but no mental component, there's no way to just stay here. I'm too uncomfortable. So that happens. But yesterday, I just went walkies. I was just thinking of this, that, and the other. I don't really have anything. In fact, I have nothing written down on my topics list because even though I have been up since four o'clock this morning, because once again, gut pain, having to get up and take care of issues. And by the time I'm done with that, I mean, four o'clock, I normally wake up at 5.30 anyway. So I'm not going to be falling back to sleep because I'm already reaching the point of starting to come awake just from pain alone. So I've been up since four. I've been playing some video games. I've been doing such like that. I've been trying to think. I've got all sorts of stories, stuff that I'm still working on. For those few people that are new, I work on story ideas all the time. I talk about them until I can get treated for my ADHD inattentive type. I'm not really going to be able to actually write. <sighs> and that bothers me anymore. But life is life. But as I told my therapist, and I wanted to quickly jump onto this one because I've been thinking about this one as well. What's been going on in the United States with our government being dismantled from the inside? The VA has been badly, badly damaged even just in these last few years. My primary care provider told me that I needed to tell my therapist who was authorized to make requests for drug treatment and a psychiatrist and all this. They sent the paperwork off. Stuff was sent back saying, no, not you. And other things just being rejected because we sent it off to the Veterans Administration and they never replied. So we're rejecting. So joy. So I had even talked to my primary care provider who said I needed to talk to my therapist to have him do it. So now I've got to go back to them and say, great. So when I was telling, talking to my therapist about that feeling yesterday, it was like I've been in a fog in a sea all my life. 
the diagnosis and him sending off the paperwork and my doing all these things was like a light, a light of hope, a beacon getting closer, coming up over the horizon and coming closer to me in the night. But the way the VA has been acting and all this stuff, it's, it's retreated back over the horizon again. It's all dark. And that's just the way I feel about that. Whether or not it's true, I do not know. That's just the way it feels. Where hope came close, but ah, no, no. And unfortunately, that's something that has been taught to me through my life. I try to never, ever, ever hope for things. I try not to look forward to anything. I mean, even a little bit. I just don't look forward to things. I don't go, gosh, I'm working for this thing, so this will happen. It's, I'm going to be trying this thing, and it's not going to work. And I go into all this with, it's not going to work. Because if you hope for things, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. And in my life, of the things that I have personally messed up so it didn't happen when I went into it, it's been about 5 to 10%. The rest of it has just been the world saying, you hoped? No. You wanted? No. You actually had your hopes up? No. So my life has taught me don't hope for anything. Don't expect anything. Don't go, gosh, I want that. Because saying, I want that means it's never gonna happen. I'm not going to get it. And I know that's not everybody's life. That's just what life has taught me. So every time I've hoped for something, it has been rubbed in my face that, no, you're not going to get that. No, no, you're not. And it's gonna hurt. So I don't hope. I just go through life and if things happen that are nice, then that's good. But I don't hope because if I hope for something, it's not going to happen. And again, 5% my fault, 5 to 10% my self-sabotage, 90% of it just the world saying, yeah, you know what? No. So thumbs up on that. I try not to hope. Plus, comfort scares me because whenever I've gotten comfortable in life, like I've gotten comfortable in a job, gotten comfortable in a situation, gotten comfortable in something where I feel safe, that's dangerous because immediately, immediately, something happens that just comes down with a hammer and things change so badly that it's terrible. Like I felt just before the year 2000, before I crashed and burned with my, my alcoholism, or just during that whole time frame, I felt okay in my job. That same day, the hammer came down and I was gone. And every single other time in my life, every time I have felt safe or comfortable, the hammer has come down. So yeah, whenever I feel safe or comfortable with something, I look around in danger because that means life is once again going to say, oh yeah, no. And it's been consistent, 58 years old. And yeah, every time that I felt comfortable or safe throughout these 58 years, life has said no. Every time I've wanted something, no. But it, that's okay. I mean, for the minor material things, that's fine. I, I don't care because stuff is just stuff. We come into this world from owning nothing. And when we die, it doesn't matter what you have, you can't take it with you. We come from nothing, we go to nothing. Stuff is just stuff. I mean, I, like, it's just, who cares? It's stuff. You accumulate stuff, I try not to anymore. I've still got stuff, but all the stuff I own now can fit inside of one closet. I mean, 12 years ago when I was married, I and my wife's stuff took a whole house to fit into. But after her death, you know, loss of all that stuff. Now everything I own fits into a closet. You gotta pack it in correctly, of course. <laughs> But it does fit into a closet. Chucks, all this stuff did would just fit into a single box. So, thumbs up for that. I don't want to be depressing. And I, I haven't tried to be depressing. But, you know, welcome to 
life in a physical world. <laughs> uh. Anyway, though, I have opened up 20 to 25. No, I have opened 24 hours worth of comments on my community tab, and I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. I'm not reading the comments right now, except accidentally. I have a very good paraphobia vision. I can see a whole page when I stare at one thing. So I accidentally read comments that way, but I'm not trying to. I'm going to read, thumbs up, and answer as many as I can afterward. And if I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker, and even though I count in American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my depression, fibro, grief, ADHD, and more, I'm sometimes amazed that I can remember what my own name is. And I have been known to forget that. Time to shake that up. I've been saying that for a few days. We have Chris Zuski, thank you very much. Red Hot Chili Fan 98, thumbs up. Simon Peters, greatly appreciated. Harsh Rajesh, I sure hope I'm close, thank you very much. Waiwi, thank you very much. Pianista Trista, I sure hope I'm close. Sebastian Ferris, greatly appreciated. Sean Vilar, thumbs up and thank you. Grace Khan Wi Fi, I bet I'm nowhere close, but thank you. Johnny in Japan, thumbs up. We have Chris Bryce, thank you very, very much. Mike Maverick, SAG brand, thumbs up. And then we have Steve Carter, thumbs up and thank you. Back way only, son of a gun. We have Chief Run on Grass, thumbs up. Colin Reisenauer, greatly appreciated. He just had a birthday, he's 22. Then we have Nick, thumbs up and thank you. Black Cheese It, greatly appreciated. Melissa Herner, thank you very, very much. Leo Men Santos, greatly appreciated. Charles Roseman, thank you very, very much. Bullcrap TV, thumbs up and thank you. We have Isaac HJKDS, <laughs> thumbs up and thank you. Revere's Flash, thumbs up and thank you very much. And last but not least, Flora Mew, thumbs up and thank you so very much. Each and every one of you, you get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people. Thumbs up and thank you all so very, very much. Greatly, greatly appreciated. If you could check out my various links down below, I have Twitter, Facebook, Patreon.com. If you could become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money through the patronage, I have a PayPal link down below. You can send money directly through that. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money, I have an Amazon wish list link as well with things like cat food and hamster bedding. I'm going to get hamsters again one day, and my cat uses hamster bedding in her cat box. She likes aspirin. Thumbs up for that. Now, do not feel obligated. I don't feel entitled, and if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart, where I draw interest, so thank you very much. If you could toss me a like, I appreciate all the positive validation I got from my existence, the definite thumbs up, and if you could hit that notification bell on the subscription button, that would be cool. Does it work? What does it do? No ideas. Trust big tech. <laughs> uh. Anyway, though, I've got this video that you've been watching. I have another video I need to edit and then render, and I'm hoping to do some more goofy stuff with HitFilm Express on it, so thumbs up on that. Do not disappoint the lobster hat wearing duck head of judgment. It suffers from an excess of scorn, and it is not afraid to cast that scorn upon all who disappoint it. Please. Do not disappoint the lobster hat wearing duck head of judgment. It suffers from an excess of scorn. And of course, Black Lives Matter. Damn it. It shouldn't even be a point of contention. Black Lives Matter. And justice for everybody that the jack-booted, brown-shirted fascist thugs and police uniforms keep brutalizing in their homes and on American streets. Please wear a mask, wash your hands, don't touch your face as best you can, practice your social distancing, stay at home unless you have to go out. It's painful, we're all in survival mode. Yes, you're gonna do some backtracking, but you can't fix the damage on your house until the storm is over. And this is the best way to weather the storm. So, you take care, 
Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, my friend, and that is a very good thing. Definitely a thumbs up. So be as careful as you can, and I will see you.